So to make a playlist, there's actually a few ways you can get started doing so. From your videos uploads page that you can get to by clicking on video manager, you can actually go through and selectively put check marks next to each of the ones that you may want to add to a particular playlist and choose add to playlist. At this point you have the option to scroll through existing playlists you've already created or to add a new playlist with that topic. For instance, you can even go through and search for a topic. Let's say I wanted to create a new playlist that featured the word money. If I search for the word money, I'm going to find different videos that have that keyword used either in the description or in the tags and I can grab each of these and add them to that money sheet. Here we, we're going to put all these ones here. Here's some money rocks. And then I can go add to, add to new playlist and we're going to call this one money. Create playlist. You have the option when you make a playlist whether it's going to be public or private. A public playlist is one that can be seen and potentially embedded, and I'll show you that in the next step, by others. A private playlist is one you can only see when you're logged in and authenticated with your actual YouTube login. In the case of this demonstration, I'm going to make this a public playlist. And over here, we hit Create Playlist. And now, that's added to a playlist that we were brought right to. It shows us that the playlist now has a total of eight uploads in there and from here if we choose to we can actually go through and modify the playlist. To modify playlists you're going to want to click on playlists. From the playlist screen it'll show you the different number of playlists you've created. Whether you've chosen one or several YouTube goes through and will stretch them out to actually fill the width which is really neat as well. Aesthetically it makes it look nicer for your viewers. So like right here I only have two videos, this one three, and it made them stretch the width of the page. So it shows I have a total of 16 and I can go through each of these and tweak how these playlists actually function. The one we just created called Money we're going to look at first. Over here it shows that it took the first video that we had chosen for that playlist and defaulted that as a playlist thumbnail. The playlist thumbnail is what people will see when they go to your video's playlist. So you want to make sure you choose a good one and I'll show you how to change that right now. By going through here, you have the option on each of your videos to make it the featured thumbnail. Right over here, we're going to take this one and we're going to make that the featured thumbnail. Over here, under settings, you have a couple of different options. Again, we have the public or private privacy, but the settings here allow you to either specify whether others can embed or not embed this playlist. The advantage of embedding is they can put that in their website. Some people don't like that as they want to control it and make sure people aren't assuming any type of responsibility for being behind the video. Realistically, the benefits you get from letting people see your videos and embed them generally are going to outweigh any type of detriment of not doing so. After all, we're trying to get our videos seen, right? So over here, allow others to like or dislike. That's up to you. You may say, you know what, I want to let people put the videos on their website, but I don't want their opinion. These are my playlists. That's all up to you. Now when I click Save, the next thing you're going to notice is the thumbnail will be updated to the one that we had chosen. Over here it shows us the duration of it, and the duration's coming out just over 30 minutes and that's something you want to consider as well as you put together your video playlist because you can also go through and change this up a little bit. You may want to make sure that it's under a certain duration or you want to make sure that certain videos are seen before others. By clicking on edit playlist you have that ability. So from over here as you hover your mouse over each of the videos you can choose to take a specific video and shoot it right to the top. Let's take this cat one for instance. That one's now the first video that's going to play when the playlist begins. It's generally a good idea as well to put a full description within this description area. This is going to help you also to get picked up by search engines and the YouTube search itself when people are looking for particular terms. You can even go through at this point and quickly add a different URL. The playlist does not necessarily have to be videos that you've made yourself or even have any type of relation to. You can go ahead and make a playlist across multiple channels and 
I find this to be a very useful way to tie in different videos into a playlist tapestry. You can include other videos that are relevant to a particular topic. Let's say we're per you know, looking at a particular news topic, we want to focus many videos around that area. Playlists are a list of different videos to play in that order. It's that simple. You're going to want to use it for personal branding, but it's also great for organizing others' videos as well. Now remember, since this information is very fluid and I will be updating my playlist regularly as I add videos and make new changes to existing playlists. One way I'll always be able to have this updated for you if you're looking at this in the future, and it's always going to be the future, isn't it, folks? <laughs> then you could just go to videosplaylist.com. That's videosplaylist.com. Easy to remember as it specifically will take you to videosplaylist.com. And in my environment here, we have the money ones that we had created for this demonstration. And you see that they were sorted into the order that we had made. There's different ones I put together for masterminds groups, through detox fiber, relationships, singing, and whatnot. The reason for this is somebody may want to just go and check out my cats or just see a speaking engagement or check out some low-carb recipes, but it may not necessarily want to go through all my comedic digressions or daily video logs. And that's fine. The advantage of YouTube is you can quickly jump around, surf multiple channels, and here, by providing playlists, I make the experience even easier for people to come in and get exactly what they want. So let's go to the cats, for instance. Maybe somebody doesn't want to see any of these education or blabbing vlogs or anything. They want cats because sometimes people just come to YouTube for cats. Well, I wanted to make sure that that experience was available to everybody in a clean, ready-to-use format. And what I put together here is a total of 42 Bengal Cats videos consuming exactly two hours. So many people are buying televisions and DVD players and game devices these days that come with the ability to stream YouTube. It's a shame not to take advantage of putting this together, making it easy and fun. So over here I put these together in some kind of order and basically starts off, this is the first uh, Bengal Cat video I'd put online and kind of kicks into uh, you know a little bit of getting to know the Bengal Cats. And then it gets just into fun silliness all around. As you can see, different view counts are coming up on different videos, and that's not dependent on the age or other things. Mostly that comes up because of the keywords that were used within the video. And it doesn't matter which order these in, are in. I could put this from oldest to newest. In fact, let me show you a couple of real easy-to-use settings that YouTube gives you directly within this manager. You'll notice, by the way, on the sidebar with the new YouTube, new YouTube layout that came out in 2012, we actually have a real nice setting for all the other playlists as well. I really like to take advantage of this um, you know, sidebar real estate, so to speak. So when I click Edit Playlist, the different options that I'm going to have here, of course, I can let people like or dislike, embed or be public or private. I picked that one as a thumbnail. I figured that would get people to <laughs> think about what the channel's about. I don't use descriptions. I recommend taking a look at whether you want to or not. I find it best to, personally to just focus on the channel, but it's a good idea from an SEO perspective to do so. Over here, I can quick sort by views, title, date uploaded, random, or reverse. I actually really like the way that they're set up right now, and Anytime I want, I can quickly add to this playlist. So I'm not going to make any changes. I'm going to cancel out. And here I am to enjoy the Bengal cats. And it takes a little work to get things to weigh out that way, too. You have to consider that when you get into your editing and which videos you put into your playlist. So the advantage I have here, these are all videos that I had created, so I'm not going to take them on or put them back off of a playlist. If somebody wants to learn about dieting, for instance, well, they can jump right here. And as I create more low-carb videos, I'll put them in here so people can go directly to the playlist. On that note, I wanted to take a moment to show you about a creative way that you can actually make it a lot easier for people to find your playlist. As you remember, I had set up a URL for all my playlists called videosplaylist.com. Again, videosplaylist.com by taking these two words, videos and playlists. That's really easy to share with somebody else. What if I just wanted to point out a quick and easy way for somebody to get to my daily video log. Well, 
they can go to that video's playlist and scroll down and click it, but I could even make it easier by just having people type dailyvideolog.com that takes them right to that playlist. Let me show you another example. You recall there is one on here called Darren's Digression. By typing in darrensdigressions.com, they go directly to that particular playlist, which is filled 100% with random silliness. Now, the advantage of that is, again, it's easy for me to direct and include somebody on a video playlist that takes them past the whole video's uploads, all the different videos that I may have uploaded over a period of time that are not around a particular topic. Again, channels are defined by their video's playlists. And over here, 16 playlists by Darren Williger. Well, this one here we made as an example. I may want to turn this one here to private as we take a look at how we weigh out the other ones real quick. I could delete that later as well. So under the videos playlist, we're going to go and manage my playlist. You see here it says 16 videos playlists. Different ones are available, different topics. If you're setting up a channel about your business, you can get even more granular with your playlist. For instance, you may be somebody who's involved in real estate and you want to have a couple of videos where you share your expertise and knowledge around that area and some other videos that talk about these specific properties. There's so many different ways you can leverage this. The whole key is you're making it easier for your viewer to find to be involved with and to really focus on what it is they're interested in. I like to define playlists under different categories and you can also allow videos to exist in multiple playlists if you choose.